Welcome to the part two of our series on the 100 black inventions that changed the world. In a world where the media often ignores or hides the accomplishments of black inventors, it's important to recognize and celebrate the amazing things they have created. Black inventors have faced many challenges throughout history, including slavery, discrimination, and racism. Despite these obstacles, they have amazed the world with their intelligence and creativity, leaving a lasting impact on our lives. In this video, we want to highlight the incredible intelligence, resilience, and artistic talent displayed by black inventors throughout history. From groundbreaking technological advancements to life-saving medical discoveries, from inspiring artistic innovations to important social contributions, this series will showcase the wide range of black brilliance that has influenced our world. Before we get right into the video, please smash the like button and subscribe to the channel so you can catch all the parts in this series and keep informed of our eye-opening black narrative. Number 80. Folding Chair On July 7, 1911, an African-American man named Nathaniel Alexander of Lynchburg, Virginia, patented a folding chair. According to his patent, Alexander designed his chair to be used in schools, churches, and other auditoriums. His design included a book rest that was usable for the person sitting in the seat behind and was ideal for church or choir use. While Alexander's folding chair was not the first folding chair patent in the United States, his innovation was that it included a book rest, making it suitable for use in places where the back of one chair could be used as a desk or shelf by the person seated behind. This would certainly be convenient when setting up rows of chairs for choirs, so they could rest music on the chair ahead of each singer, or for churches where a prayer book, hymnal, or Bible could be placed on the reading shelf during the service. Number 79. Automatic Railroad Car Coupler African-American inventor Andrew Jackson Beard was born a slave in Jefferson County, Alabama. Emancipated at age 15, he became a farmer and then built and ran a flour mill. In 1890, while living in Woodlawn, Beard patented improvements to the Janney coupler, making the mechanism safer and more efficient. The coupler Beard improved was used to hook railroad cars together, and to be operated required the dangerous task of manually placing a pin in a link between the two cars. Beard himself had lost a leg in a car coupling accident. Thanks to his design, the coupling could be now performed automatically. Beard received two patents on the innovation with the first being sold for $50,000 in 1897, equivalent to $1.8 million in today's money. His improved coupler was the first automatic coupler widely used in the U.S. In 1887, the same year Beard's first improvement of the automatic coupler was patented, the U.S. Congress passed the Federal Safety Appliance Act, which made it illegal to operate any railroad car without automatic couplers. Beard's invention was a forerunner of automatic couplers used today. Number 78. Stainless Steel Scouring Pad The scouring pad is an important part of any kitchen process. It is undeniably one of the easiest ways for cleaning off burnt-on messes from cast iron pots and pans, broilers, and stove burners. They can be used for a variety of cleaning jobs, like hard water stains in the bathroom, cooked on grease on grills, or soap scum in the shower. This helpful invention was developed by an African-American named Alfred Benjamin. On June 19, 1962, Alfred Benjamin patented the stainless steel scouring pad, which would inspire many improvements including the plastic needle surface sourcing pad which is now more commonly used. Number 77. Synchronous Multiplex Railway Telegraph Granville Taylor Woods was one of the most famous African-American inventors with over 50 patents to his name. Styled as the Black Edison, Woods' famous invention is the synchronous multiplex railway telegraph, which allowed communications between train stations from moving trains by creating a magnetic field around a coiled wire under the train. In 1887, Woods used notes, sketches, and a working model of the invention to secure the patent. The invention was so successful that Woods began the Woods Electric Company in Cincinnati, Ohio to market and sell his patents. Thomas Edison later filed a claim to the ownership of this patent, stating that he had first created a similar telegraph and that he was entitled to the patent for the device. Woods was twice successful in defending himself, proving that there were no other devices upon which he could have depended or relied upon to make his device. Number 76. Foil Electret Microphone 
Along with Gerhard Sessler, James Edward Maceo West invented the foil electret microphone in 1962 while developing instruments for human hearing research. Compared to the previous condenser microphones, the electret microphone has higher capacitance and does not require a DC bias. West and Sessler optimized the mechanical and surface parameters of the system, creating a better microphone device. Today, nearly 90% of the microphones produced annually are based on the principles of the foil electret and are used in everyday items such as telephones, camcorders, hearing aids, baby monitors, and audio recording devices, among others. Number 75. Self-Lifting Farm Elevator Around 1930, African-American inventor William Chester Ruth improved on the farm elevator, a steel chute with chain and slat movement to carry grain or feed bags, hay bales, ear corn, and other products up into a truck, corn crib, or hay mow. Ruth's version of the electric-powered elevator had closely fixed but separate gears for activating the chain conveyor and for raising the elevator. The simple pull of a lever transferred the power of the motor between conveyance and elevator height adjustment. Ruth's self-lifting farm elevator saw widespread adoption, including in the commercial mushroom industry next door in Chester County. Number 74. Automatic Lubricator for Steam Engines While working in a home-based machine shop in Ypsilanti, Michigan, Elijah McCoy would invent an automatic lubricator for oiling the steam engines of locomotives and ships patenting it in 1872 as Improvement in Lubricators for Steam Engines. Automatic lubricators were a boon for railroads, as they enabled trains to run faster and more profitably with less need to stop for lubrication and maintenance. By 1899, the Michigan Bureau of Labor and Industrial Statistics reported that the McCoy lubricator was in use on almost all North American railroads. Number 73. Amputee Self-Feeding Device while working at the Bronx Hospital in New York at 37 years old, Bessie Blount invented an electric self-feeding apparatus for amputees. She used plastic boiling water to mold the material, a file, ice pick, hammer, and some dishes to create a prototype of her invention. The device had a tube to transport individual bites of food to the patient's mouth. The patients would bite down on the tube, and then the next portion of food would dispense to the mouthpiece from the attached machine. This allowed patients to control how much they would eat without assistance from others. Today, she is known for pioneering the first electric device for feeding amputees. Number 72. Control Unit for the Artificial Cardiac Pacemaker The Artificial Cardiac Pacemaker is a medical device that helps regulate the heart's electrical activity and maintain a normal heart rhythm. It consists of two main components, the pulse generator and the control unit. The control unit, also known as the programmer or external programmer, is a device used by healthcare professionals to interact with and program the settings of the artificial cardiac pacemaker. It allows them to adjust various parameters of the pacemaker to meet the specific needs of the patient. Otis Boykin, an African-American inventor, is credited with inventing a control unit for the artificial cardiac pacemaker. Number 71. X-ray spectrometer. George Edward Alcorn is an African-American inventor best known for inventing the X-ray spectrometer, which earned him the NASA Goddard Space Flight Center Award for Inventor of the Year in 1984. The X-ray spectrometer is an important scientific instrument with numerous applications across various fields. Scientists can use X-ray spectrometers to determine the composition of unknown materials, identify impurities or contaminants, and assess the quality and purity of substances. X-ray spectrometers also play a significant role in archaeology and art restoration. They are employed to analyze ancient artifacts, paintings, and cultural heritage objects without causing damage. By determining the elemental makeup of these objects, researchers can gain insights into their origin, age, and authenticity. In 2015, Alcorn was inducted into the National Inventors Hall of Fame for his invention of the X-ray spectrometer number 70. Illusion transmitter African-American inventor Valerie Thomas would devise one of the most impressive inventions of the 20th century that still has applications today. She is credited as the inventor of the illusion transmitter, a device that would send three-dimensional images across a distance, making them look as if they are in front of the mirror. In simple terms, imagine your television could project the on-screen image directly into your living room as a three-dimensional image. In operation, Concave mirrors are set up on both ends of the transmission to produce the illusion. 
The net effect of this is an optical illusion of a three-dimensional image that looks real on the receiving end. This brilliant innovation placed Thomas among the most prominent black inventors of the 20th century. NASA continues to use her technology and is exploring ways to use it in surgical tools and possibly television and video. Number 69. Gas Masks Garrett Morgan is already well known as the famous mind behind the modern three-light traffic signal. His witnessing of an accident would lead to improvements of the existing traffic light signal, inspiring the green, yellow, and red traffic lights we all know today. However, this was not Morgan's only achievement. He filed a patent for the first gas mask invention in 1912, but it wasn't until two years later that the idea really took off. When a group of workers got stuck in a tunnel below Lake Erie after an explosion, Morgan and a team of men donned the masks to help get them out. After the rescue was a success, requests for the masks began pouring in. His device used a moist sponge to filter out smoke and cool the air. It took advantage of the way smoke and fumes tend to rise to higher positions while leaving a layer of more breathable air below by using an air intake tube that dangled near the floor. The hood used a series of tubes to draw clean air of the lowest level the tubes could extend to. Smoke, being hotter than the air around it, rises. And by drawing air from the ground, the safety hood provided the user with a way to perform emergency respiration. In 1914, he received a patent for the invention of the gas mask and was awarded a gold medal by the International Association of Fire Chiefs. Morgan's safety hood was used to save many lives during the period of its use. Number 68. Mechanical Planter both the seed planter and cotton planter, which inspired modern-day mechanical farm tools, were developed by a black inventor at a time where racial bias and discrimination were at the peak. Henry Blair would be the second African-American inventor to receive a U.S. patent. He received two patents for his outstanding inventions. His first invention was the seed planter, patented October 14, 1834, which allowed farmers to plant more corn using less labor and in a shorter time. On August 31, 1836, he obtained a second patent for a cotton planter. This invention worked by splitting the ground with two shovel-like blades which were pulled along by a horse. A wheel-driven cylinder followed behind which dropped the seed into the newly plowed ground. Blair had been a successful farmer for years and developed the inventions as a means of increasing efficiency in farming. Even more remarkable was the fact that Blair was illiterate and had no formal education but would go on to devise inventions that are applicable today. Number 67. Street Sweepers Street sweepers, as we know them today, make the job of keeping the streets clean less tedious. With them, the process of sanitation and waste removal is achieved faster and more efficiently. We can all thank the brilliant mind of African-American inventor Charles Brooks for this amazing invention. Charles Brooks' idea for the street sweeper was meant as an improvement to the already existing but less efficient street sweeper that were in operation at that time. Unlike other sweepers at that time, Brooks' sweeper was the first self-propelled street sweeping truck. His design had revolving brushes attached to the front fender, and the brushes were interchangeable so that when snow fell, scrapers could be attached for snow removal. He received a patent for his invention on March 17, 1896. A few months later, on May 12, 1896, he patented a dust-proof collection bag for the street sweeper. Although little information is available about his life, we do know that funding for the production for his sweeper was provided by George M. Halstead and Plummer S. Page. The production took place in Scranton, Pennsylvania, where each sweeper was priced at around $2,000. It proved to be so successful that the Pennsylvania state government gave a $100,000 contract to the manufacturing company. The maintenance superintendent of Buffalo, New York, was so impressed with Brooks' design that he adopted the model for his city. Number 66. Clothes Ringer In 1888, Ellen Eglin invented her groundbreaking device, a special type of clothes ringer, which was a machine that had two wooden rollers attached to a crank. After being washed and rinsed, Wet clothes were fed between these rollers, and an immense amount of water was squeezed out. The clothes were then hung to dry, a process which took significantly less time due to the ringer. Although the design was perceived as a popular product well into the 20th century, Eglin received almost no credit or financial success of her own invention. Due to being black at a time when racial discrimination was at its peak, 
she was forced to sell the rights of the invention for just $18 to an unknown white agent. Eglin's ringer could go on to inspire the design for mops that we still use today. Number 65. Bread Kneader. Joseph Lee was an African-American inventor whose experience in the baking industry would lead him to create the bread kneader, an improved method for making bread with more efficiency and less effort. Lee was interested in automating the process of making bread to ensure a uniform quality with less time and effort than it took to knead by hand. He invented a machine that did that and received a patent on August 7, 1894. This kneader was more efficient and faster than kneading by hand. The next year, on June 4, 1895, Lee received a patent for a machine to make breadcrumbs. This invention was prompted after Lee's machine started making too much bread. The Royal Worcester Breadcrumb Company used Lee's invention to make breadcrumbs for restaurants. Lee's breadcrumber was widely adopted and recognized. The National Inventors Hall of Fame writes that within five years of its invention, it was used by many of America's leading hotels and was a fixture in hundreds of the country's leading catering establishments. In 2019, Lee was inducted into the American National Inventors Hall of Fame. Number 64. Pastry Fork. While it might sound like a simple invention, Anna Mangin's innovation of the pastry fork would simplify the manner of making pastry and lead to other innovations of household tools. Before the invention, kneading pastry dough by hand was a grueling process that caused arm cramping and other pains. Mangin innovation ensured for maximum efficiency and required less effort from the user. The pastry fork was designed for a wide range of uses, including beating eggs, thickening foods, making drawn butter, mashing potatoes, making salad dressings, and most importantly, kneading pastry dough. The pastry fork improved the lives of many people and eventually led to more electric mixing inventions that are used to this day. Number 63. Steam-Operated Propeller While being enslaved in Mississippi, Benjamin Thornton Montgomery would invent a design of a steam-operated propeller to provide propulsion to boats in shallow water. The propeller could cut into the water at different angles, thus allowing the boat to navigate more easily through shallow water. While his design was efficient, he would not be able to acquire a patent for it on the basis that he was a slave and not a citizen of the United States. Number 62. Hairbrush. In the late 1800s, Newman invented a hairbrush that used synthetic bristles instead of the animal hairs commonly used for brushes at the time, making it more durable. It could also be taken apart easily for cleaning because it contained a compartment at the bottom that could be removed from the back and be cleaned. The hairbrush she invented is described in her patent as simple and durable in construction and being very effective when in use. Newman's hairbrush was obviously an improvement and quickly became more popular due to its efficiency. Due to her invention of the first hairbrush with synthetic bristles, Newman would rise to fame as a leading female inventor. Her invention has gone through many improvements and innovations and still remains a staple item today. Number 61. Gas Furnace In the early 1900s, central gas heating had yet to be developed, so people relied on burning coal or wood as their main source of heating. While furnaces and the concept of central heating have been around since the Roman Empire, the science hardly advanced in the years that followed and the heating methods utilized by the end of the 19th century were still relatively primitive in nature. African-American inventor Alice Parker felt that the fireplace alone was not enough to keep her and her home warm during the cold Jersey winter, and went on to design the first gas furnace that was powered by natural gas and the first heating system to contain individually controlled air ducts that distributed heat evenly throughout the building. In more technical terms, Parker's heating system used independently controlled burner units that drew in cold air and conveyed the heat through a heat exchanger. This air was then fed into individual ducts to control the amount of heat in different areas. What made her invention particularly unique was that it was a form of zone heating, where temperature can be moderated in different parts of a building. Parker's invention was further improved in 1935 by scientists who created forced convection wall heaters that use a coal furnace, electric fan, and ductwork throughout a home. Nowadays, homes utilize thermostats and forced air furnaces, which can be attributed to Parker's design and invention of the central heating. Black inventors have shown us what's possible even when faced with tough situations. 
They have proven that anyone can be smart and do amazing things. By sharing these stories, we want to challenge the idea that black people are not as good as others and inspire everyone to appreciate the achievements of all people, no matter their background. It's important to recognize the wide range of inventors and honor their important contributions. As always, watch out for the next part of the series. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to our channel and share our videos to let more people know the truth about blacks and to hear their own part of the narratives. Thanks for watching.